sausages, one of Britain's favourite foods. We have it for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, and of course for snacks. We eat them at home, in restaurants and cafes, and of course we have them at barbecues. But with so many varieties, it's always difficult to know which one to choose. You can make sausages out of almost anything, so beef, pork, lamb, even rabbit or kangaroo. But people tend to prefer the kind of sausage they were brought up with. In England, pork sausage is the most popular. In Wales, it's lamb, and in Scotland, beef. Of course, you've got lots of spices and lots of herbs in different varieties, but choosing the right one is very important. Let me cut this one open, and you can see a very, very smooth meat indeed. Look at that, the puree mm. down. And within that, there's also a filler, rusk, that's unleavened bread that's been toasted and ground down, and that soaks up lots of water and fat, and that means the butcher can get away with using less of the meat. Mm. You like a chunky sausage? I certainly do. Well, look at this one then. Lots and lots of meat. It's a sign of a confident butcher. It's a good chunky sausage. That looks gorgeous. What are those yellow bits? Apricot. Mm. Meat, fruit and meat work so well in the sausage. And you can see the little chunks of meat in there as well. Yeah, and chunks of fat. It is important to have some fat in there because it keeps the sausage moist. Well, I'm going to be doing a bangers and mash recipe today, but with a twist. And I've got some good quality pork sausages. With this, you of course need a good quality potato. You need to choose a floury potato rather than a waxy one, because that'll give you the nice fluffy texture of a good mashed potato. So this one's a King Edwards, they're great. Good quality. When you're cutting potatoes, it's a good idea to cut them at a fairly even size. If you cut a really small bit like this, it will cook much faster than a bigger bit. So this will still be hard when this is starting to get soggy. So try to keep them to an even thickness, then they all cook at the same speed. Did you get any salt in there? You're quite right. It's a good idea to add a pinch of salt because that raises the temperature that the water boils at so your potatoes cook faster. Mm, it's something about bangers and mash. Mm. It's never really gone out of fashion. It's good old comfort food. Whether it's breakfast in a greasy spoon or dinner in a swanky West End restaurant, sausages are a firm favourite. We eat them with mash, with chips, in sandwiches and rolls. We fry them, roast them, grill them and blacken them on the barbecue. Britons spend over £400 million a year on sausages. You could say we're bonkers about bangers. I think that the, the great attraction of the sausage actually is not that it's simply a, you know, a convenience food and it's not that it's just easy to cook. It has universal appeal. You know, every part of the country has its own particular sausage. And the passion for sausages reaches right the way through the social classes, through all ages, from kids through to old people, because it's, they forget it's quite an easy thing to, to chew and digest when you haven't got many teeth. Um, but also, it is a truly democratic food. The origin of the sausage is shrouded in mystery. It was thought the Romans plundered the first sausage recipe from the Greek island of Salamis. But now historians believe sausages go back even further. The sausage is almost certainly Neolithic in origin. All you need is an animal, and all of the components are inside the animal. And it was a way in which early peoples could make a small container in which they can either barbecue or boil the meat in a skin, and it's endured. The word sausage actually derives from the Latin for salty, salsus. Legend has it that in 320 AD, Emperor Leo V banned sausage eating across the empire. The early Christian church thought the shape of the sausage was phallic, and that, combined with the spicy ingredients, was blamed for turning feast days into orgies. Sausage eating went underground. Thankfully, the ban didn't last long, and the banger found its way back onto the highest tables in the land. One of the most extraordinary events of state that ever took place in this country in terms of food was an enormous feast given in Westminster Hall in 1685 for the coronation of James II and his anorexic Italian Queen Mary of Modena. They sat at a high table at the end of the hall in front of 145 different food items including a number of members of the sausage family. These very humble foods are sharing the table with luxury foods like caviar and all sorts of very fine and rare birds, like puffins. Along with rare birds, the kings and queens of England indulge themselves with sausages. 
but the type of sausage found on their tables was the one most of us now associate with north of the border. There are recipes in some of the finest court cookery books, the Haggis. The most famous are those of a, a man called Robert May, who was cook to the Star Chamber, which was a privy council to the monarch. The Haggis is a sausage type which everyone thinks is Scottish, and it's not. It was pan-European. It was known all over Europe. It was known in England. In the 17th century, it was served at a garter feast in 1671 to Charles II as a regal dish. It wasn't considered you know, a lowly rural food. Robert May tells us that the English ate their haggis by scooping a hole in the top and filling it with butter and whipped egg yolk, and everyone helped themselves to it. Over the centuries, the haggis may have ended up as a Scottish delicacy, but sausages have remained popular everywhere. 1655 recipe I was looking at this morning instructed you to mince up some flesh of a pig and to mix it with the fat to flavour it with sage, pepper, cloves, mace and nutmeg and some salt and then put it into the skins. Very, very similar to most of the sausages that are being made in this country nowadays. So the basic banger is pretty much the same as it was when Oliver Cromwell was around. You know that I said this banger and mash recipe had a twist, but well, I'm going to be adding some balsamic vinegar to the sauce with the sausages, and I'm going to be putting a little bit of horseradish sauce in with the potatoes. It's going to work a real treat. But first of all, I'm going to add some olive oil to a pan. Using olive oil, don't use your best extra virgin olive oil at all, because what you're doing is basically you're wasting your money. You're heating the olive oil, you're going to lose the flavour, so go for a cheaper standard olive oil. And save your extra virgin for salad dressings. Another good thing about using olive oil for this is it can get nice and hot without burning. If you use butter, it starts to burn. Yeah, basically, what I'm going to do here is just brown, get them nice and golden brown all Ooh, the way nice over. Nice and hot, get that browning reaction going. Absolutely. There we go. Just give them a gentle turn. You can use a couple of tweezers. Don't put your hands in. Just turn them over. You can see straight away we're starting to get a lovely colour around the outside of these sausages. Mm. Look at that. Now, Alan, do you know why they're called bangers? Go on. In World War II, when there was meat rationing, they used to put loads of water into the sausages. And once you started to heat them, the water produced lots of steam, and the steam just made the sausages explode, so they were called bangers. And that's why you used to have to prick them. Yeah. Now, these days, if you prick them, it's a real shame, because already you lose about a quarter of the sausage weight before you prick them. That's just, you know, losing all the fat and the water. So weight, but what about the flavour? Absolutely. It's going down the pan. Mm -hmm. Talking about the pan and flavour, some pancetta, if you please. Italian bacon, very, very fatty, and that's going to add some lovely flavour to this sausage casserole. Is it crucial to use pancetta? Not at all, you know, you can use something like a streaky bacon. Mm -hmm. Just chop it up nice and fine, it contains a lot of fat. You can even use some smoked bacon, and that'll give a lovely flavour dimension to this dish. <laughs> the symptoms are nearly always the same. Hysteria, hyperventilation, chest pains, loss of control of bodily functions, that sort of thing. Would she be okay, do you think? Oh yes, it's typical. She's a young lass, she's been out, had one ab fab too many, and bingo. Just another happy hour statistic. I mean, if you ask me, if they can't take the comedy, they should stick with the documentary channels. Anyway, got to go. Happy hour, super strength comedy, every weeknight from nine on UK TV Gold. Go on, make it a double. I'd love a mint card. You get so much more. 0% interest, a low APR, and security when you shop online. Well, there's no good reason not to get one. I know. It's just a shape. Reminds me of an ex-boyfriend I'd rather forget. Mum, Dad, this is Neville. Sorry we're late. Achoo! Oh, sorry, yes, but... Oh. Achoo! 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 Wow. I know. Get more, get mint. You'd need a seriously good reason not to. Toilet paper! Well, Poppet, you might be surprised. You see, Charmin has a unique texture with thousands of tiny absorb bubbles on every sheet, which soak up moisture but may simply drip off flatter papers. So don't worry, a few sheets of super absorbent Charmin are all you need. Charmin with absorb bubbles. Sh -sh 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 you can find the goodness of whole grain wherever you see the Weetabix sign. 
Weetabix, what are you made of? Hello, I'm Arthur. Discover the human body as you build me up week by week with funny bones. Issue one out now, 99p.